Hello guys, in this video we will be learning how to perform a polynomial fit using C++. Now, let me just show you this program that I have made that will perform a polynomial fit on a given set of data. And this is the entire program. And in case you want this program, then I will at attach it in the description below. And since it is quite lengthy, it would not be in the description. I, will, I cannot copy paste it into the description. However, I will add a link to the code to the .c .c file as well as my website. You can check out my website writejobs.com. Just you know, search polynomial fit right there in the search bar, and you will get this program. Anyways, so let's check out this program. What it does. So here set precision is meant to set the precision of your output to only four decimal places after uh, the decimal. Then enter the number. Uh, now I'm asking the user to enter the number of data pages that he's going to be entering the data for. And I take the input as capital N and I declare two arrays X capital N, X of size capital N and Y of size capital N. X will store the X values while Y, y will store the y values and okay so here's a loop that will input the x values and here's a loop that will ask and input the y values now important thing to keep in mind is that in polynomial fitting you don't need to you know your polynomial the best fitting polynomial doesn't need to pass through each and every point and there and therefore you need to ask the user the degree of the polynomial that he wants which i am denoting with small n hat. Once you get that degree of the polynomial, you will have to declare, declare an array. I have called that capital X of the size twice n plus 1, where n is the degree of the polynomial. And this array will be storing the values of sigma x size, sigma x size squared, sigma x size cube, and so on, up to sigma x size to the power 2. And now why I have done this is, as you might know, for polynomial fitting, you need to have this mat matrix right here. And you need sigma xi, sigma xi square, sigma xi cube. You need all these values to make up this matrix up till sigma xi to the power 2. And so that's why I have created this array which will store these values for various powers of x and their sums as well. So, okay. So here's a loop that will be calculating those values. Now let's check out this another array that I, uh, a matrix as a matter of fact, capital B of n plus 1 rows and n plus 2 columns as you can see here again. Now I'm presuming that you know polynomial fitting so I will not be going to the very details of, of how we arrived at this matrix. All you need to know is that once you solve this matrix and this actually um, you can call it a system of linear equations and you will need Gaussian elimination to solve this system where A is the coefficients of the polynomial for example if you are using a two degree polynomial then there will be three terms here A0 which will be a, co a constant A1 which will be a coefficient of x and A2 which will be the coefficient of x squared so A is uh, uh, the matrix for the coefficients of the polynomial that you are using to fit the given set of data so I declared a, a matrix capital B of size n plus 1 row, uh, n plus 1 rows and n plus 2 columns because you can see that this matrix right here has n plus 1 column and n plus 1 rows. See n plus 1 columns and n plus 1 rows. However, for Gaussian elimination, we create uh, an augmented matrix which contains the RHS matrix also into the uh, on into the left hand side and thus we need an extra column to accommodate this RHS matrix right here and because the program that I created for boss elimination was for an augmented matrix and that's the way it works you need to enter the RHS values also here so and in case you're wondering what Gaussian elimination is how to go about uh, and make a program for Gaussian elimination I would recommend that you watch my other video on Gaussian elimination and I explain in very deep and and with elaborate explanation I have explained that program for Gaussian elimination 
So anyways, coming back to the program, that's why I declared this matrix capital B, which would be the normal matrix or the augmented matrix that will store the equations and a small A matrix of size and plus one for the coefficients of the polynomial. Now, here I am just building the normal matrix by storing the corresponding coefficients at the right positions except the last column of the matrix as you can see because um, okay so I am just storing the I have calculated these values in the previous loop as I showed you this loop was meant for calculating these values and now all I'm doing is that I'm just I'm just storing these capital N as the first position, sigma xi as the second position and so on. This loop is meant for doing that. And you should take I'm sorry, this uh, yeah, this loop is meant for doing that and you should take some time for and give it a thought like what I'm doing by here. Now here's another matrix that I'm declaring here that is capital Y and it will be storing the RHS matrix that I showed you right here, this RHS matrix. And here is a loop that will calculate these points up to the nth position. And by the size n plus 1, as you can clearly see that there are n plus 1 elements in this matrix, or uh, whatever, array, you can call it. So now I have stored those. And now, since I left the last column of this capital B matrix empty because I have stored all these into their respective position, but I left the last column of that matrix empty because I needed to store these values there. So now I will start a loop that will fill that last column of the B matrix with the Y values, which would be just replacing these values in um, these values by adding a column into this matrix right here. So that's the loop for that, this one. And um, well, I'm sorry, I'm referring to the wrong loop. This is this was for calculating the values, and this is for actually storing the loading the values of y as the last column of b, normal matrix but augmented. Now, coming down to now, we have created this this whole set of equations. All we need to do is invoke the Gaussian elimination and just perform those. Uh, operations to get these coefficients right here. Okay, so now here is the Gaussian elimination part that I will not be going into because it's pretty long. I made a 23 minute video explaining this. So if you have any questions regarding this, I suggest that you ask them in the comments after watching the video that I made on Gaussian elimination. So this is all Gaussian elimination, all of this. And once you have turned the Gaussian elimination, you will get the A value. You use, remember, A matrix was for the coefficient of the binomial. That's what we need right now. And then there's a loop to, you know, print those values of x to the power 0, x to the power 1. Because what a polynomial is simply, you know, a constant plus some coefficient multiplied by x plus some coefficient multiplied by x squared to degree n. So let's see how this program works when we run it. Okay, let's have a look at that. So here in Excel, I have two examples right here. One example is this, and another example here. And we will try to do the polynomial fitting on these set of data and verify them using Excel. So let me open my terminal and clear the screen. Okay. And I will have to compile the program for polynomial fit. And okay, so enter the number of data pairs to be entered. And that would be five in this case. And x axis values are these right here, okay? So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then the y axis values are 1.8. Oh crap. 1.8, 1.3, 2.5, 6.3. And the degree that I would want to use is 2. That is a quadratic polynomial or a parabola. And I get the result as 
0.55x squared minus 1.07x to the power of 1 and 1.42x to the power of 0. So let me see if this, part, if the, if this result is correct by checking through Excel. And here's the graph, the scatter plot. And let me just click on polynomial derivative and have the equation displayed on chart. Okay, so it is exactly the same equation that I got using X, using C++, as you can see right here. 0.55x squared minus 1.07x and 1.42 as the constant term right there. Now let's quickly verify this program using another example right here. Let's delete this and we will use this example now. And okay, let's run the program. Now the number of data pages is 5 and those are 1, 2, 3, 4, K zero one eight point zero five twenty six point nine zero six and sixty three point nine eight zero six. Now as you can see it looks like a pot uh, you know a cubic polynomial because one cube is one and two cube is eight and three cube is twenty seven and four cube is sixty four which is quite near to these values. So let me go ahead and use a third degree polynomial or cubic polynomial to uh, fit this data and I, I have got this result now let me just verify it using the C++ uh, using Excel okay it is a, now this is a scatter plot let me go and have a trend line fit this data using a third degree polynomial and have the equation displayed on the chart and once again we have come you know, we have arrived at the same result. 1.0140x cubed minus 0.0811x squared plus 0.0946 to the power x and minus 0.0055 which is a constant. So the program works pretty good in my opinion and you should check out this program definitely and try to understand it if you didn't understand it in this video. Okay, now like the video if you like this video or explanation and dislike the video if you disliked it and don't forget to subscribe and leave your comments in the comment section down below.